So let's get started uh, with adding Search Insights uh, to an instant search application. This presentation is being done by me. Uh, so we'll skip the introductions and get right into it. Now, why did I want to present about events today? Well, as developers, we know that um, pushing an application to production is not the end of the journey, right? It's often just the beginning because we don't know um, how that application is going to be received by users until they engage with it. We don't know what we did right, what we did wrong, what needs fixing, what new features to add without feedback from our users. And that feedback becomes even more important as we start talking about uh, features that are driven by machine learning. Right, because a machine learning model is really pretty useless if you don't train it on high quality data on a regular basis. And that's just as true of your search interface as it is with other aspects of an application. Um, as you're uh, setting up a new instant search or a new application uh, front end, um, you think you've got it right, you've got everything in there, you've uh, configured your index, you think you've got relevance and sorting set up properly, but you really don't know until users start searching and engaging with those search results. And so uh, fortunately, Algolia provides a mechanism for collecting that feedback. And that is our Insights API. And our Insights API is able to collect three classes of, of user events. Uh, when they're viewing search results, uh, which results they click on, and which results convert further down the line, whether they're in a shopping cart or a streaming site or something of that nature. And so with, with, without kind of just going in and sort of defining them loosely, I think it might be better to kind of show a practical application here. And so we're just going to dive right into coding here. And I want to show you a instant search application that I've built. Um, and this is uh, should be pretty straightforward for folks that have used Instant Search uh, in the past, should be very familiar. If you haven't used Instant Search, it's our front end library. Uh, it contains a bunch of widgets for building a search interface like this. Uh, you can see I've got some refinements down the side here. Uh, I've got the ability to type in uh, keywords in a search box. So I can start looking for, say, like my Charmander and my Charizard. And then I've got a place with my results. We call them hits. Uh, they're all being rendered from a template. And I can click through one of those and I can get to a product detail page, or in this case, a card detail page, because uh, we are using the same uh, Pokemon data set that we used for DevCon last year. Shout out to our buddy Levi, the Pokemaniac. Anyway, so now we're here in our product details page, and you see I've got this catch em button. So if I like this particular card, I can click catch em, and this would theoretically add it to a deck or add it to a shopping cart. Uh, in my case, it just calls a little function that says boop. Um, but you know, this is sort of representative of the user saying, yes, this was actually the result I wanted. But if I go into my build tools, I can look at my network tab and see that none of this interaction is actually getting back up to Algolia or, or to my search experience. So I don't know what the user is doing here. Uh, I don't know that this was the right card. I don't know which result they clicked on. And I don't know um, what results were shown uh, after they did this search here. So all of that stuff, what we viewed, what we clicked and what we converted is critical information that we wanna capture. And I'm gonna show you how to do that for this instant search application. So let's jump over to the code. You can see uh, I've built this application in React. I've got a number of components here, uh, one for my search interface, uh, another one for my hit template, and then a couple here for rendering those uh, product detail pages, my card detail page here. And so the very first thing that we're going to want to do to communicate with Insights is inject an Insights middleware into Instant Search. And I found that the easiest way to do this is by setting up a new component. We're going to create our Insights middleware component here. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some boilerplate code in here. I'll explain a little bit of it, but just for time's sake, I just kind of want to paste this in. Right, so this is um, using some functions from within Instant Search. Uh, we're actually creating a second client, right? So we've got our search client. We also have our uh, Algolia Analytics client here, this AA that comes from the Search Insights Library. Uh, then some code here to build out the hooks for the middleware. Uh, we go ahead and define it here. 
Uh, I'm setting a parameter use cookie true. This is for user tracking so that we can sort of do everything in a user context, which is great for personalization. Uh, normally, you would probably have some sort of authentication or user tracking that you're doing already. Uh, since I don't have that, I'm just setting this user token to the string Ash Ketchum, which that kind of stays with my Pokemon theme. So with my middleware in place here, uh, I can now go ahead and add this component into my search experience here. So just below my instant search component, but before my configuration, I'm gonna go ahead and drop this uh, Insights middleware into my application. And of course, we need to go ahead and make sure that we import that component as well. Okay. And then if I did this right, we should be able to jump back over here. And you can see we're already starting to get event data. So as I engage, as I look for my uh, Charizard here, and I click on my filters, uh, I'm receiving these events. And you can see looking at the payload that we've got that user information. Um, we know which objects are being shown uh, in this particular view. So we're already starting to get some really robust data about uh, how are what our users are seeing, um, their, the narrative of this search experience. Uh, but what I'm not getting is any information when I click through to this product detail page. So the click information is the next piece that we want to try and capture here. And my click is actually handled here within my hit template. So this is just a very basic template. I show the card image, a little bit of data, but I'm using React Router to actually generate this link to the product details page. And this is where we can go ahead and um, add in our on-click event so that we can actually capture that. And for our on-click, we're gonna do an anonymous function because we wanna pass some data in here. And I'm gonna use this function called send event. And send event is another gimme that we get because we're in this lovely world of instant search. So I can actually pull that in as an additional property for my hit. Um, we'll go ahead down here and put that in so that it doesn't yell at us about the property type funk and it is required and then we're going to go ahead and send it some data so the first piece of data that we need to send is that this is a click event uh, we want to send the hit right so we get all that information about what was clicked on and then we're going to give it a name so i'm just going to call it card clicked and this is just a string um, you can match it to a, a business event that you've already got defined. Some things to help you understand what exactly happened for this click event here. And so with that in place, uh, we're going to go ahead and see if that actually works over here. So we'll do a quick refresh. And we can see that we're getting our click event now. And let's see. So interestingly, we're getting uh, that event name, that card clicked. We're seeing the user token. And interestingly, we're getting this position information. So we're already starting to see um, the power of collecting these events, right? I can see here that um, our, this Charizard that I've clicked on is in position five, right? It's not the first or second uh, search result. And that could be very valuable in aggregate. Right? If a large number of people are clicking on this fifth card rather than the first or second, then that's a really valuable piece of information to let me know that maybe this particular card needs to get boosted up in the search results. Uh, maybe we need to be showing it a little bit earlier if this is the card that people are looking for. And that's actually something you can do with Algolia uh, by using our dynamic re-ranking feature. So we can use this event data to do that on your behalf and say, oh, we're noticing uh, that these results that are being served very low should be boosted up in the rankings. Um, so that's just kind of one example of the types of things that we could do once we're collecting this event data. Um, and we haven't even gotten to the most interesting one of all, right? Which is a conversion event. So this is when um, a user has indicated that this is in fact the thing that I wanted um, by adding it to a shopping cart or by streaming the video or reading the blog post, what have you. And so this is really kind of the most valuable event to, to collect. And it's actually a little bit more challenging because it's the first event that we're collecting that's outside of the search experience. We're down on a product detail page. So there's a little extra work that we need to do uh, to get this up and running. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here to my card details. You can see my silly little uh, handle click function here uh, that just puts boop up on the screen. And I'm gonna replace that with a slightly more uh, robust handle click. 
So let's see, we'll put it right here below it. So this function is actually using our uh, analytics agent, our Algolia analytics agent, to uh, call out to the Insights API and send our conversion event. And let's see here, the old one here. And so in order to use it, obviously, I need to go ahead and import that agent into um, my code here. And let's see, that's called uh, that's search events, sorry. Cool. And in order to send this conversion event, I need five pieces of data. Uh, I need a user token and an index name. I need a name for the event, a query ID, and one or more object IDs that are actually converting. The event name, again, this is just a string. I'm going to say card caught. Again, you would just use whatever sort of your business logic is there. For user token, uh, in a real world event, you would want to use whatever your source of truth is for users. Uh, in my case, I actually have it set as an environment variable along with the index name. Uh, and I can pull that out of this utility function that I have here uh, on the Algolia side. And so that covers our user token and our index name. We've got our card caught, which leaves our query ID and our object ID. Now the object ID is actually fairly easy too um, because I've mapped the object IDs in my index to object IDs within my data source, my source of truth here, uh, which is a good best practice so that you can kind of keep those two sources of truth uh, in line with each other. But that just means that the same data object I'm using to serve up the card here, I can actually use uh, to pass that information into my click event. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this into an anonymous function again so I can pass stuff in. And I'm gonna serve my object ID directly out of my data object here. That just leaves one last piece, which is the query ID. And that's the thing that we really need to make sure it gets all the way from instant search down to this page. And in order to do that, we need to make a couple of changes uh, because we don't actually surface that within the hit by default. There's a piece of configuration that you need to add in order to surface that information, which is we need to turn on our uh, click analytics. So let me go ahead and get that in here. We'll set that to true. And that allows us to surface this within our hit which means that we can take it and we can add it into the query string that we're sending down to the details page. So just like we've got um, this object ID here, I can go ahead and add a query string and set the value of that to the query ID, which is a double underscore attribute within my hit now. So if I've done this right, um, if we go back to our results, we should see down here, uh, it's a little bit small, but you can see that the, the URLs now include this query ID. And so when I click through, that's now part of my URL. And I can very easily grab that um, using another helper function from React Router. So if I go back here, I can add uh, a function called use search params from React Router. That. Um, React Router DOM. And now I can go ahead and take the query string and I can receive it as an array, search params. I need to grab that from my use search params. Oh, use search params. Okay, we'll call that function. And then now I can go ahead and get that query ID uh, right out of here by saying search params get query ID. And if I've wired this up properly, now let's see, what did I get wrong? On click, window click. Uh, data object ID, search params, get query ID. Let me just grab that out of here just to make sure I've got it right. Uh, 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 let's see. Wrong. Uh, oh yeah, arrow function. Arrow function, here we go. 
Depends on the search events. Search insights, is it? The joys of live coding come for us all. Should be search insights. Boom. Hey, look at that. Now, let's see if we got everything right. We'll go ahead and, uh, oh, what are we not getting in? Oh, I know. We have to go back and actually pass our query ID in. So let's do that. Oh, something's not coming through. Let's see. Oh, my object ID. Why is that not coming through? Let's see. Unclick data object ID, singular. One last try. Hey, and we've got success. So these are the coolest events to capture, right? Because um, we're outside of our search context, but now we've linked this event back to our search context and we'll have the ability to um, do all sorts of sort of interesting things around showing trends, uh, around showing uh, items that were frequently bought together, around uh, showing similar items. And all of that comes from having this good, strong conversion data, feeding it back into models on the Algolia services. And I know this was a lot to kind of go through. The good news is it's all documented. If you do, uh, if you look for, um, I think it's add search insight events um, in the Algolia documentation. So that was a lot, I know. Let's get to something a little more fun. Uh, we can go ahead and move away from this live coding now, and we'll go ahead and uh, bring Keisha Rose up on stage.